now live streaming and the the workshop issues at Cambridge Water Tower. Gary, do you want to introduce us? Go straight to Chris and Ken. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, councillors. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about this proposal. I've got a series of um, slides to um, uh, present, and uh, um, Ken and I'll speak to those, and I have to answer the questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you. So a little background, um, although most of us will probably be familiar to the council, um, it's um, a heritage uh, structure built in 1902, it's um, 19 metres high. It's uh, a brick construction, um, it's also a uh, brick line, it's um, got a, a cast iron water tank which is severely corroded on, on the top. It's um, the dimensions of that tank are shown on, on the slide there. And, Bit of historical interest is that the, um, the fact that the community of Cambridge had access to such an advanced um, water articulation structure was one of the catalysts for the Cambridge Fire Brigade. Um, it had a very short life and in actual fact it hasn't been used operational since um, 1926. A bit of the current status, it's um, registered as a category two building um, or structure for the purposes of um, Heritage New Zealand. It's um, also um, categorized in a similar fashion for your district plan. It's one of only two um, structures of its type in New Zealand. Um, uh, the, the council undertook a, what's known as a detailed seismic assessment, also known as a DSA in um, calendar 2014. Um, the outcome of that um, exercise was identified that the structure achieved a 25% new building standard classification or, or, or status. Um, that automatically means that it's, um, it's deemed to be earthquake prone. Um, the, the legal minimum that's typically applied is 34% um, uh, of the new building standard. And um, for any structure this type, um, the recommended minimum that we would seek to achieve would be 67% of the new building standard. Some images there, um, probably the, the two things that to note there is, is the open top nature of the water storage tank, empty um, and um, corroded. Um, although it's got a lot of detritus inside of them. The other um, image to the right um, shows it um, allows the council probably to identify its physical location and proximity to the reserve proper and neighboring properties. The building to the, the building complex to the south is um, this rest haven, the, um, the, the road at the very top of the picture is the um, from traveling from um, right to left is the uh, former State Highway 1. Through Jim, can I just ask a question around that map? That yellow boundary looks like it goes sort of through the middle of it, is that not quite quite right? I don't think it's rectified accurately in that image. Right. Um, you can be comfortable that uh, it's, it's close it's to the boundary, but not over the boundary. Thank mm -hmm. you. Good question. So turning to the risk assessment component of this, um, a quick summary. It, it's located on public reserve, obviously, um, known as the Cambridge Greenbelt. It's, um, it's, as probably the last question highlighted, it's located in close proximity to the boundary with the adjacent retirement village. The steelwork components of the structure, um, that's the, essentially it's the old um, water storage tank, is um, badly corroded, um, seriously corroded and is in a failing state. Um, the brick structure of the tower itself, um, that's helped get the route obviously and that is eroding, um, but it has been closely monitored. And um, technically it's deemed to be an earthquake prone building and that's in terms of the um, the Building Act provisions and also um, a, a, a formal engineering process that applies a strict range of tests to determine its status. Chris, could I just just ask on that that the percentage protection because a lot of the earthquake um, protection work are, are designed to enable people to get out of a building um, safely, I suppose, in, a, in the event of an earthquake, it, and, and it doesn't necessarily protect the, the building itself. Is, is that the 34%? Um, and if we go to the 67%, does that give us some 
confidence that the uh, the structure will remain standing in the predicted earthquake strength? The, the whole um, new building standard test is, um, in terms of the um, seismic cl classification, it's a little complicated because it's also got to be read, um, Mayor Jim, in the context of its importance level. So, so typically those uh, standards are applied um, against, say, uh, the, the legislation or, or, the, or the regulations that apply in the space also apply a test for um, importance level of building. So the importance level of building deals with some of the things that I think you're touching on, which is that um, the structure might stay upright and the people might be able to exit it. But you still have, you might still need to use that building. You know, a hospital would be a case in point, which have a, um, I think, from memory, an importance level of four. Other buildings, maybe like a council building that's used for an earthquake operations centre, might have an, an importance level of three. Those requirements translate into um, what is an appropriate new building standard. Um, also, what um, organisations also do is they they work through these considerations and arrive at a policy setting as to um, what's appropriate in any particular circumstance rather than just trying to just try to apply the broad sweep of those um, NBS and importance level. Yeah, so, so effectively we're trying to protect obviously the historic building, but also the, the public yes. health, the, the, the risk to people. So um, we can do the work on the, uh, on the tower to bring it to whatever level is decided. But as I say, my understanding is that could mean that the building's still going to fall down. And how do we make sure that that does it safely when it's located so close to residential property? So are we looking at needing to strengthen the tower, but also build something um, to protect those residents that uh, are immediately alongside the tower? So the, the proposal that's um, described in this presentation looks to, um, over a period of time, out to 2026, financial year 25-26, to um, strengthen the tower so that um, the seismic risk which the um, DSA has identified is removed. Mm. So what that would do it would address those considerations touched on in the, um, the earlier risk slide which is obviously members of the public generally have free access to the space in and around the town. Mm. And the other thing is that it sits um, physically in very close proximity to a neighbouring property. So, so those are considerations that the overall proposal looks to take into account. Okay, thanks. I'll just quickly go through to... Um... Just push, push it that way. Yes. On sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, forward, please. Thank you. Again, forward. We arrived at this point. Um, this slide, um, uh, which councillors, is really just to illustrate um, probably the, the external state of condition. Um, you can see there on um, the left, there's a some steelwork, which um, in the past has formed a perimeter around the, for servicing purposes around the outside of the of the water storage tank that sits atop the tower. You can see the parts that are missing. Um, the example to the right shows the brickwork and the white and in the general condition of the grout. Um, this is illustrated. You see there that um, some of the grout is missing, whereas the grout that sits, say, between the um, courses of the bricks themselves in this particular image is still in good order. So turning attention to um, how, the, how the, um, the District Council has responded to um, the circumstances that it um, had, confronts here is that there has been <coughs> close attention paid to um, making sure that investigations are carried out to understand the, the state of the structure. And also there's been deliberations in the recent past by the Council as to how it might address um, the uh, overall proposition. So the, um, the evidence of the, the tower condition, particularly its um, seismic capacity and the risk that goes with that, um, that was a formal exercise uh, completed in 2014, but it um, certainly hasn't been um, off the radar, so to speak, since that period of time. Uh, for example, uh, there is a, a, the council's in possession of a further, not a seismic, not a DSA, but a 
general condition assessment, um, which is made available to us as a result of some resource consent conditions that the council imposed on building work in close proximity to the tower that was received as recently, or as dated as recently as July 2022. Um, turning to um, how this uh, response has been assessed in the now is that really taking a duty of care approach. Um, if the, the council itself is a building consent authority, it has um, responsibilities under the Building Act for how it deals with um, earthquake prone buildings and the assessment of those. So obviously any action the council takes in respect of its own buildings is gonna be consistent. Um, we've got to take all reasonably, reasonable or all reasonably practicable step measures to make sure that if we've identified a risk that it's addressed. And um, that really um, brought the, um, the scope, I suppose, to either remove the structure or strengthen the structure. Um, obviously, the proposal that's been considered here is obviously about making it safe and strengthening it, and uh, we'll talk some more about that in a minute. Um, the nominal time frame for attention is by calendar 26, and um, the timeline for that is uh, also described later on the PowerPoint presentation. So uh, there are probably some considerations that have changed in, um, concurrently with this, is that um, Rest Haven, the, the, um, the operator, neighbour next door, is, is undertaking building works at this time. Those building works are um, authorised by a resource consent, as well as the normal building consent considerations. Um, that process um, identified there was potential for ground movement, or um, it was a risk that needed to be addressed. So the resource consent conditions imposed on that development imposed a, a monitoring program. Those, um, the results of that independently conducted condition monitoring program being made available to the council. So turning to, turning to the options, um, and uh, this is a very quick um, summary of exactly what those options were. They, the remove option is, is simply unrealistic. I've, I've described the, the, the nature of the structure. Um, and, and obviously from a heritage standpoint, um, it simply wouldn't be allowed. It would be, um, it, it's simply not an option that can be um, viably advanced. The relocation one, well, well, that's also an extremely expensive option. So expensive in fact that it's simply not a viable option. Um, the heritage protection, the risk mitigation um, focuses on strengthening being the, um, being the option, and that is um, clearly the current focus. Um, all options, of course, would require some form of resource consent. But uh, the focusing in this particular conversation is on strengthening what is. There's a simple table there which um, uh, tries to um, size, size those options. Um, Hopefully it's it's readable. Um, option two is the uh, is the option that has been settled on as being the uh, most practicable. It goes to your question, Mayor Jim, about 100% um, NBS or 67% NBS uh, or new building standard. So the um, the sort of money that's being proposed here, based on the um, a preliminary assessment without the benefit of any detailed design work, is in the vicinity of 1.7 million. So talking to that option two, um, option two would provide um, the target is that it would allow us to land on a 67% um, NBS. Um, the building itself wouldn't carry an, uh, any importance level um, in the sense that I described um, earlier in the presentation and would be adequate to protect and mitigate, to protect the public and to mitigate the risks that we came in a, in a um, pretty general way early on in the presentation. Um, as you saw from the previous slide, there's a, there's a modest marginal cost difference between options one and two. Um, the higher marginal benefit is obviously being able to achieve um, 67 MBS, and that's the, that's the uh, proposed or the so, way forward. So what's, what's the um, additional benefit we would get to, to go to 100%? Because, uh, again, that marginal cost of just over 100,000 is not much. It's a hundred and uh, thank you, Mayor Jim. Yes, that's that pretty much sums up the um, the, the approach that's been taken to evaluating the options. Is that there's a significant advantage to the council to have something like this structure with its heritage status and its prominent public positioning to be sitting at the 67% NBS target. Um, the difference between 
um, the lesser outcome um, and the recommendation or the option that we're pursuing is that sum of about $116,000. The value option or the value opportunity is quite, um, and the, the suggestion is the, the greater value lies in the option two, the 67 cent NDS for a, a very small marginal difference over the, um, just the, um, the bare minimum. Yeah, but what would we get if we go to the 100%, does it mean it would withstand a much stronger earthquake or, or what What do we get effectively if we've got to spend 1.7 that you're certainly looking at at the moment and the difference to get 100%, another 100,000 <coughs> on the total cost doesn't seem out of the way if we're going to get some real benefits out of that. Now, Jim, the, the benefit is that we could effectively have 100% compliance with the new building standard, as if that um, <coughs> building consent was put to the table now and was to be built to the requirements of the code, then that would be the outcome that would be achieved for that um, for option three. Yeah, but I suppose the point I'm trying to get at, does that mean it's going to stay standing in a, in a moderate earthquake. Yes, it would be. In terms of its seismic resilience, you, you achieve the full designed intent as if that um, structure was tested at the at time of um, resource, oh, sorry, building consent and a time of construction to the all the, all the rules, all the requirements of the, of the new building standard. You get a much more resilient, uh, much sounder um, outcome than you would if you, if you were setting on something that was um, better than the existing 25% new building standard assessment. Um, and it would be, and, and the option three that was being advanced here is obviously um, a balance between trying to achieve 100% new building standard and, and affordability. Mm. Uh, Claire, I saw you out of my corner of my eye and then Mike. Yeah, thanks. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, firstly, is the option of the, um, that, that's been put before us going to restore the tank at the top that yes. might make uh, a, a usable water water tank? Should we cover, cover to that? That, the, yeah. There is a slide that covers off on that oh, point, yeah. but mm. the, the intention is that um, the heritage <coughs> value is protected by virtue of the fact that it is a facsimile representation of the, mm. of the existing tank. Mm. It is not a full structural replication of the of the tank okay. and the integrity that would be required for it to actually store volume of water. Okay, so, no, that, that's um, good. That's it. Mm. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I did have another question, and that oh, was sorry. to do with the resource consent, because you said all of the options need a resource consent. Would that be a um, publicly notified consent process uh, so that the general public would be able to make submissions on it, or is it more likely to be um, yeah, just limited notified or even, you know, maybe yeah, um, staff delegation. I'm not sure, Councillor. Um, we've had some preliminary conversations with Heritage New Zealand because obviously they would have a strong interest in, in the detail of what is proposed here, um, especially in the, um, <coughs> the strengthening work and how it might affect the um, fabric of the building and how it would um, affect the Heritage, <coughs> excuse me, the the heritage aspects of the building, um, I'm sorry, I'm not across how the application might be addressed by the consent authority. Ken, did you yeah. want to just uh, yeah, so, so you worship, so, so just a couple of meters. Um, so, so I know we're hitting you with a, with a lot of figures, but I just wanted to, to say we're, we're not actually making a decision today. So um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, take comfort from the fact we're not saying, do you want option two or option three today? Yeah. Um, we, we, will, we will come back to you with a, with a lot more de detail um, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a late point. Um, yeah, the, the, your, your, um, your latest question or your last question there, um, yeah, Councillor St. Pierre, in, in regard to, to um, yeah, to, um, you know, public input through a resource consent process. Look, as Chris has said, we're not quite sure uh, where that would land. Uh, but in terms of these strengthening options, I just wanted to assure you, um, and you'll see this in the next few slides, 
Um, look, but we're, what, what we are suggesting is that we work up a proposal to come through the LTP process, um, the 24 LTP process. So, so, so whether the resource can send, um, yeah, you know, needs to be a public process or not, I don't know. Um, Chris doesn't know. Um, but but what, what we are saying is before we spend 1.7 or 1.8 million or whatever, um, yeah, clearly it does require a public consultation process. Um, they, they would, um, yeah, you know, need to look at the options, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, so, so just really, yeah, we assured um, that the public will have plenty of um, opportunity to have input into this. I so see that. Shape up the oh, opinion. sorry, Ken didn't want to cut yeah. you off. Um, I see Mike and Roger had indicated, but I'm just wondering whether, uh, and look, I'm guilty as anyone of asking questions, but uh, I detect that some of the questions are going to be answered if we get right through all the slides. So is it possible yes. to, to wait until we've had the presentation and keep the questions till the end? Is, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jim. So um, this does address the, the, the underlying um, questions, I think, that were, that were just discussed over the last five minutes. The, the next few slides try and describe how we might approach the journey and um, deal with immediate risks and, and the opportunity to make informed judgments after public consultation. So the, 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 the um, briefing um, is about uh, a preferred option, which is the staged approach for the implementation of option two, but if obviously those matters are, are decisions, the actual outcome of those uh, options is something that will be an outcome of the process that's these. Next three slides should describe to the, to the council. So the, um, the intention is, is that uh, we have to address the immediate risk, which is the condition of the water, water tank, and the surrounding steelwork um, obviously hasn't been used in an operation since, since 1926 and was in a poor state of repair. So the proposal is in the current financial year, we, we do need to intervene to the extent of spending $375,000. What that does is that um, it removes the potential immediate risk. Um, it clears the way for replacing it with a symbolic or facsimile tank structure later, later in the process. Um, the stage one is simply to um, dismantle and remove. In other words, it, it takes the top hat off it, I suppose, um, on an interim basis, but it makes sense. Um, it doesn't do anything to, um, other than to remove the, the tank structure or to change the size that capacity. But it is the first step in a, in a journey of mitigation. So stage two, um, which um, our, our timeline forecast looks for happening in, in the period 2024-25 um, as a financial year, or perhaps over the years up to 2024-25 is about $140,000 investment over the journey for the final design and for the consenting process that, that enable the work. Obviously that funding and, and that step is something that will be um, tested through the long-term planning process. And then stage three, which is the physical strengthening work and the, and the installation of a symbolic or facsimile tank, tank structure. Then <clears throat> that again, uh, as a stage of work, as um, Ken said uh, just a few minutes ago, pointed out a few minutes ago, it falls fairly and squarely within the, um, the long-term planning period of um, 2024 to 34. Um, obviously, as the council develops all of its proposals for what it concludes in that 10 year period, that is all open for public consultation and discussion. Um, but this simply sets out how that um, journey from uh, today to, um, to calendar 24, sorry, calendar 26 would, would be achieved. It's all subject to those processes, which were uh, pointed out just a few minutes ago. There has to be a detailed understanding of what's proposed. The options have to be sized properly. There has to be consultation with the community about how you complete the journey in the appropriate way, at least for the financial components of that is by way of um, the council's conversation around its draft long-term plan for the period 24-34. Um, the punchline of course is that based on what we know now, the total cost of that option two is in fact the option that the council um, settles on is that it would be about $1.7 million over that period of time with a lot of those detailed decisions still to be made by the, by the elected group in the future. So a quick summary, um, the, the project benefits, obviously the top of mind one is to mitigate the risk, the, the known risks and um, 
that is um, essentially um, centered around the condition as, as opposed to the seismic standing, but the condition of the, of the water tank structure. So um, by intervening now, dismantling and removing, then obviously um, that's a very prudent thing to do to make sure that that potential risk is, is put to one side. Um, the journey of, um, un, of um, addressing the seismic capacity of the tower um, is commenced um, and um, council statutory obligations and community obligations are all met over the journey. Um, from a heritage point of view, um, the, the values, um, the importance of the structure to the community of Cambridge and probably to the district in a wider sense, um, all of those will be preserved and protected for the future. Um, and the, uh, the obligations that are, implied, that are imposed uh, through Heritage New Zealand and through your own district plan, obviously those are upheld. Um, finally, um, next steps, trying to bring together all of the considerations here, um, we would move to um, convert this preliminary understanding into a detailed project plan. Uh, we take uh, uh, steps to remove the immediate risks, and that's where uh, um, one of the resource consents be required, which is obviously around the dismantling and removing the, um, the former water tank or the old water tank and the associated steelwork. We would move to complete the final design and consent of strengthening that would that journey would allow us to have a much more detailed understanding of what the challenges were for the council for its um, as yet not not developed or even considered draft 2434 long term plan. But the um, the focus would be on um, looking at how the tower could be strengthened um, and also preparing for the step where we would fabricate and replace. In a replica tank format, the uh, the water the water tank storage component at the top of the tower. Have you answer any questions? Thanks, Chris. Uh, I had Mike and then Roger uh, to kick it off, and I've no doubt there'll be others. Uh, thank you through the to the mayor. Um, thanks, Chris, for your presentation and Ken. Uh, a couple of questions. One is: uh, Does seismic ratings do do they sort of decrease as a building ages? Like it starts off at 67 and, and there's a percentage every year, it drops a little bit, or if it's part of a percent? Or... Uh, it, it's, I'll explain as best I understand it. The, um, the obligation to protect against um, an earthquake prone building is described in a, in, a, in a complex test, an engineering test, which is Oaks and Viking. So the, um, the methodology in which that is um, which that is undertaken is all prescribed. So it's, it's, it's very detailed. It's very, it's very focused on seismic as opposed to condition generally. And I don't think there is any regression on it. Um, right. it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't abate in any way. Right, perfect. No, thank you for answering that. And just the last thing, and it's a bit outside the scope here, but because it's potentially such a significant investment for council, um, and I guess just looking at the amenity value as part of that consent process of just how we can engage the community into that finished project, you know, whether it be signboard seating, because it's in a really nice little park park there. So I know it costs a little bit of money and it might be another budget, but it would be nice to include, you know, how we can engage the community into that space when the time comes. Mm. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Ken so, and then... so, so, your worship, and I think um, councillors do have an awareness of of this. So, um, yeah. So, Rest Haven do have plans. They're very much at the um, at the initial formative um, stages of um, of basically um, yeah, constructing and gifting a playground. Um, yeah, that would um, yeah be in, in the reserve um, nearby um, the water tower. So, uh, so I understand. I'm not sure. I know Sally has, a, has an knowledge. I, I know there has been some, um, yeah, some, yeah, some conversations with some of Sally's people around that. Um, yeah, you know, it will be a little way off. And in fact, it could it could be around about the time that we're actually doing that strengthening work in, in, in a couple of years' time. So, yeah. Roger. Yes, thank you. Um, as a resident that might be affected, and I look out my front window at the water tower every day. I really do. Uh, acknowledge your um, plan to retain the heritage value of the water tower. Um, and my understanding is that with the current work that's going on with Rest Haven, there would be quite a considerable degree of vibration anyway with that work. So certainly the, the plan to remove the risk 
of the water tower is probably very imminent, is it not, to get that removed um, as soon as possible? Councillor, yes, the, um, that consideration for uh, uh, ground movement, if I can yep. describe it that way, um, was, um, was rightly identified by the council as a process to resource consent for development. So there is a, um, as part of the resource consent conditions, there's a, um, a comprehensive um, monitoring program, which is imposed on the consent holder. And um, that work is carried out um, by, uh, by a company, an engineering specialist consultancy company, um, who carry out that work on behalf of the consent holder. And those reports are then made available to, to the council um, as the consent authority. And we have visibility of those. Um, and the, those condition assessments and the way they are currently framed require an external and an internal assessment and um, that process includes identifying um, uh, empirically the, the <coughs> physical location of the building so movement can be identified. Um, the, the first tranche of monitoring has been completed and there has been no impact as a result of the work okay. today. Good. My next question is um, there have been discussions over uh, remediation of that term um, water tower for a considerable period of time. My understanding is that there's already an allowance in the existing LTP in years downstream for some work to be done on that tower? Um, yeah, so, so through your worship, actually, I don't believe there is, Roger. No. Um, so so at, at one point, and it was actually probably a couple of um, LTPs ago, um, yeah, we did um, yeah, we did provide, actually, I think it was around about $700,000 yeah. um, for demolition. Um, at, that, at that point, we were very much looking at, um, at, um, at de demolishing, um, but, uh, yeah, but, 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 but obviously that, oh, hasn't, so that, that hasn't progressed. We've walked away from that. Um, I think in that process, we probably, um, we probably have lost, um, you know, you know, the seven hundred thousand dollars that you know it hasn't carried through into um, into future LTPs. So yeah, so so look, I, I don't believe that there is any funds at the um, at the moment, uh, w w which is why it is uh, what why this proposition is a matter of of winning those funds. I guess through through the public consultation process of of shaping up the twenty four LTP. Well, it's good to have that clarification because I had thought that there was some provision, but good to have that clarification because it must obviously be included in the next LTP considerations. Yeah, correct. Good, thank you. Yes, that's, that's certainly what we're aiming for. Any other questions? Okay, all right, Chris, thank you. Thanks for that report. So the, the plan is to bring it back with a formal proposition, what, to the next um, SPMP meeting, I, I so presume, the, is it? Or so We're um, trying to move it as fast as we can. Uh, uh, the, um, Obviously, the wider um, propositions are the ones that were touched on in the last part of the presentation about um, the actual options selected and the and the investment made through the long term planning process that will follow the long term plan development process. But in terms of the detail about the um, the dismantling or removal of the tank, um, how that will be carried out, what its cost will be, the resource consent considerations, we're advancing those just as um, just as fast as resources allow. And um, I would imagine, although obviously I put a direction on this, um, that would be very much influenced by um, the end of the triennium and when the new council comes to office. Okay, thanks for that. And, and look, just from my point of view, I'd really like to know what we could buy for the extra 33% strength um, yes, yes, yes. going from 67 to 100%. Um, because a hundred thousand, and I presume it'll be loan funded over the period of the loan, um, obtaining that, uh, you know, on base value, just looking at percentages, it looks like we're going to get a whole lot for a hundred uh, going to a hundred percent. So don't want to waste money, but um, if if the if we are going to get a more certainty of, of a secure asset by going that extra hundred thousand, I'd really like to know what we actually get for that extra hundred thousand. Understood. As part of the next discussion. Any other comments? Right. 